Hello. Good morning. This song is literally been on my heart and um, I just want to play it uh, for you guys. It's been something that Holy Spirit has been waking me up, just ministering to me while I'm in between that sleep and awake. And it's just simply saying I give myself away so you can use me. I'm not sure if you guys can hear this song playing, but this song has literally been playing like a record <laughs> in my spirit. So I just wanted to come on this morning and actually just play this song for a few seconds. Thank you guys for coming on. As you come in, you'll need to give StreamYard permission before you're able to comment on the thread. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for liking, sharing this content. I appreciate you guys coming in with, with me on today. I just wanna share a word of empowerment with you guys today. And I'm just going to let this play just for a minute. If you guys can hear that, let me know in the comments that you can hear um, this song playing. Because I'm not sure what you guys can hear on your end. Probably with me not talking, you can hear it a little clearer. All right. Yes, you can hear it. Great. And I just believe this is a season that we are in in the body of Christ where um, the Lord is just really wanting his sons and daughters to fully surrender to him. And this is a season where he is calling us up higher just to really yield and surrender ourselves to him for his glory so that he can use us and we can be usable tools in his hands. And that's the season that I believe we are in, in the body of Christ. It's a clarion call that God wants us to lay aside our will for his will and fully surrender unto him our everything, our perspective, our emotions, our agenda, because our life is not our own. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to him when we accepted Jesus Christ. As our Lord and Savior, we yielded ourselves to the purposes of God and the agenda and mission of the kingdom of God. And that is the Great Commission, to go into the hedges and the highways, to preach the gospel, to be witnesses of God, so that other individuals can know God and come into the fold. So I just wanted to share that this morning with you guys, just a quick bit of an encouragement. And that's, um, I believe that's Maverick City that sings that. Wait, no, that's not Maverick City. That's um, McDowell, I think that is, who sings that. All right, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. Well, today I want to just encourage you my name is Sherry Downs. I'm a faith-based destiny coach, and I coach individuals to maximize their highest potential and fulfill their destiny. And this is exactly why, William McDowell, thank you. <laughs> this is exactly why I am on social media is to empower individuals. I uh, coach privately and I coach group sessions in maximizing your potential and fulfilling your destiny. And I have such a passion to empower others to fulfill their highest potential and 
fulfill their destiny, maximize their highest potential and fulfill their destiny. So today I want to talk to you about the stuff dreams are made of. The stuff dreams are made of. Type that in the comments. The stuff dreams are made of. But we have to understand that dreams come from Dreams and destiny can be an inter interchangeable uh, concept or word. So when people talk about living their dreams or doing the thing that they've always dreamed about, typically they're talking about something that is in their heart, within their greatest desire. So today I want to center this topic, since I am a destiny coach and I'm a faith-based destiny coach, I want to center this topic around how, as believers, we begin to enter into living our dream. Um, dreams and destiny, again, interchangeable words. Dreams and a destiny, a destiny is something or a dream to which a person or a thing is destined or predetermined course or events often held to an irresistible power or agency. So a dream and a destiny can be interchangeable, but in terms of destiny, we look at, at we look at it as if it's already predetermined. It's something that you were destined to do. It was something that a higher power in the faith faith based world we say God, a higher power God, already destined you to do this thing, and you feel at home in it, like what I'm doing now being a destiny coach. It's something that I've always done. And it's something that I feel that is within my innermost being that I'm supposed to be doing. So just as we can live out our dreams, we can live out our destiny. And our destiny is not necessarily a destination that we end in, but it is a life that we live, that we either feel that we've always we've always desired it or it was something that we were meant to do or something that we were meant to be. So when we talk about um, destiny, I just kind of begin to meditate on the stuff that dreams are made of, the stuff that destiny is made of. And I came up with three different components, desire, imagination, and ambition. Desire, imagination, and am ambition. <laughs> so when it comes to desire, desire is um, something that is birthed out of ideas, thoughts that come to us Maybe this thought or this idea came to you because of something you were exposed to. Maybe this thought or idea has always been with you, even, even since childhood. And it's an idea or thought that you cannot shake. For example, as a child, I had a thought, or desire, or an idea to become a teacher. And this idea has literally stayed with me throughout my lifestyle, throughout my life. And so the thought or the idea or the encounter that I had that activated my desire came through a thought or an idea, okay? So that thought, which was in my mind, you should be a teacher or you are a teacher or you desire to be a teacher or I want to be a teacher. However, that thought came, maybe it came by inspiration, somebody that you met, something you had an experience with, that thought or that idea came. And then the way that desire manifested is because that thought or idea, after you pondered on it long enough, settled within your heart. And then it began to be in a desire. So that thought, 
that encounter, that experience, that idea became incubated in your heart and it's something that you could not shake, right? So that thought, that awakening, that enlightenment uh, into this is who I'm meant to be. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I feel that is inside of me. And oftentimes, guys, we have these experiences in our adolescence as a child. And this thought or idea, after it is incubated in our heart and we ponder it, we oftentimes have to put feet to that idea. And one of the things in childhood, when I had the idea or the thought or the desire to become a teacher, I would, without um, out, outward motivation, I would try to teach my friends. I would bring things home from school and try to teach others. Um, and then later on in life, I would take on this teacher um, or mentor or coach um, personality and identity, not hmm, guided by influence, but this is just who I became throughout the years. As God began to cultivate me, because I became a believer at 14 years old, so I began to hear the voice of God leading me in this direction. So that thought, after that thought was pondered for a while, it became incubated in the heart and it was birthed as a desire. A strong desire or a strong idea birthed within the heart that... Um, one begins to do something based upon that idea. This idea that becomes desire in my heart prompts me to move. It prompts me to take some sort of action, which I did. I began to bring things home and try to teach others. So, for example, when we're a child, we, um, we will play dress up imagination, desire, imagination, and ambition. So that thought, that desire, that idea, then prompts my imagination to explore this idea further, to explore this desire further. Maybe you dreamed of being an artist. Maybe you have dreamed of being like me, a teacher. Maybe you have dreamed of me being or of yourself being a nurse. And as a child, you may have imagined yourself in this light. You may have played dress up and you have, may have um, uh, took, an on, took on a nursing role. And later in life, you actually became that. So I did a poll and I asked certain individuals, what did you want to be as a child and what are you now? And majority of the individuals that I asked or polled said, I desire to be this and I am that because I had an environment that cultivated my desire. So when you have a thought or an idea or a um, desire that gets birth, that gets incubated in your heart, you have to be around an environment that will cultivate your imagination, an environment that will allow you to explore the idea that's birthed within your heart. This is what I want to be and this is who I want to become. So if we're not in those cultivated relationships, maybe our parents, they supported us, sent us to school for that thing that we desired to be as a child. Maybe we have a singing voice and we want to be on Broadway, or maybe we um, want to go to a certain school and we want to become a dancer. Whatever that gift, that talent, that ability is, or that desire is, being around an environment that will begin to cultivate that desire and push you towards that direction will then scaffold the dream or the destiny. Now, here is the downside to this. When we are not around 
environments that cultivate. Now, this can happen in adolescence. You can have this awakening in adolescence, or you can have this awakening later on in life. Just depends. Everybody is different. So this cultivation happening will then place you in a mind frame, a heart posture, an affirmation into your destiny or into your calling. For example, if a parent, okay, let me back up. I, for 26 plus more year or more years, I was an early educator. So I um, taught preschool between birth to three years old, right? No, birth to uh, third grade, right? So during this time, I observed children. And what I observed is leaders. I observed natural gifts, natural talents, how children naturally within their own environment settle into roles and personalities naturally. I begin to see gifts. I begin to see talents. I begin to see those that were more creative than others. I begin to see those that were less creative and more of a leadership type. Uh, other children followed them. I begin to see those who were builders and built things with their hands. I began to see the homemakers and those that were helpers and those that were aiders to the teacher. I began to see the children naturally settle into their preordained destiny personality. Okay, I'm going somewhere with this guy, so follow me. The stuff dreams are made of. Type in the comments, I am a dreamer. Each one of us comes to the earth with a specific destiny, preordained purpose in why we are here. Oftentimes, when we do not have an environment that is able to cultivate that destiny or that personality, we lose the essence of who we were naturally created to be. A lot of people are molded by what their parents want them to be. They're molded, molded by what society says they are. They are molded by these things instead of living out the, from the inner person who they were supposed to be. So when we talk about the heart, the heart is the inner most being of an individual. When we talk about something being in our heart, a dream being within our heart, that dream is lodged within the spirit of that individual. Man is three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Our soul is comprised of our will, our emotions, and our, our mind, our will, and emotions. Our soul is comprised of our mind, our will, and emotions. So track with me. What we see is the soulish realm is awakened in the mind with an idea, but that idea brings an enlightenment to the soul, to the spirit, and the spirit captivates that idea within the spirit, and that's the spirit of a person begins to maul ponder over, awaken to that idea that came to the soul, right? So this is how the soul and the spirit are interacting with bringing us into our preordained destiny. Each individual has a preordained dream or destiny that God placed in us, right? It, it's called a dream because it is big. It's beyond you. It's bigger than you. You cannot fulfill it on your own. So a lot of individuals say, well, there's a dream in my heart to become a Broadway dancer. There's a dream in my heart to do this, that, and the other. So in order for dreams to be fulfilled, you have to have the cooperation of a community of a higher power. You cannot fulfill that dream by yourself. Even like you see people who rose to stardom. Well, they oftentimes had somebody that helped scaffold the dream. They had somebody to come along and push the dream that was 
birth through an idea, which became a desire, which settled in their spirit. And we are to be led. We are spirit beings, right? So we are to be led by the spirit. But when you are a regenerated spirit, when you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of your spirit, the Holy Spirit empowers the idea that awakened your spirit man and became the desire that the Holy Spirit began to brood in your heart and the Holy Spirit won't let it go. Because what the Holy Spirit does is brings back to the remembrance everything that Jesus told us. So that encounter, that experience, that idea that came to you was a God idea, a God experience where he awakened your spirit to something that you already knew. Why? Because our spirit has already been here. Eternity has already been placed within us. So we come to the earth and we literally have to walk out in real time in the plan of God in the earth. Eternity is in our hearts and we have to begin to walk it out in real time in the earth, okay? So when we have people who believe in our dream, when we have people who believe in the destiny that has been placed on our life, I just read an article with the lady who created Spanx. I can't think of her name right now, but she created the company called Spanx. She was doing something that she wasn't passionate about. She was in a career that she wasn't passionate about. She was just this person that uh, was trying to get somewhere, but she didn't know where she would get, but she lived with a, uh, she didn't know how she would get there. She lived with a roommate and this roommate would always tell her, one day you're going to do big things. You're going to change the world. And at the time, this, uh, the founder of Spanx had no trace of what she was going to do, how she was going to do it. The dream hadn't even been placed in her heart, but there was somebody in her life that spoke into who she really was. And for this lady, the founder of Spanx, the roommate ended up passing on, but she always remembered, as I read this article, she always remembered her roommate that would always tell her, one day you're going to do big things. You're going to change the world. But at the time she was a college student. She was, had a roommate. There were no signs of big things in her life, but she kept in her heart that this person, and I believe this is how God does us. He sends people along our path that speaks into our destiny, that speaks into who we were really created to be and what we were created to do. Now, the uh, founder of Spanx is a billionaire and um, she ended up creating the company called Spanx outside of the same apartment she lived in with the roommate. The roommate ended up passing away through an accident, but she never forgot the encouragement that she received from the roommate that believed in her destiny, that believed that there was something great on the inside of her. So the stuff that dreams are made of, dreams are made of desire, imagination, and ambition. So when we are in the imagination stage of the dream, say the idea came, the idea the experience, the encounter is now incubating in our heart. We just feel like this is something I'm supposed to be doing. And everything in our lives keeps drawing us back to that thing. Maybe you go to the grocery store and somebody said, or you have an encounter maybe at the grocery store, maybe you meet somebody and they say, yeah, you really look like you could be uh, an actress. Maybe you look like you can be uh, somebody on TV. You look like you can be, or it's prophetic words, right? Maybe you've getting prophecies that constantly affirm this dream or this desire. And oftentimes, if we can really recollect back to our childhood, we had that desire 
or that dream early on. But here's what happens, guys. Imagination can't get off the ground. You may be around people who they gave up on their dreams so they don't know how to scaffold your dreams. You can become a product of your environment where everybody in your family does this, but your dream is contrary to that. So you have people denying your ability to explore your dream. I always say imagination is destiny wrapped up in a small body. When children are innocent, young, um, where life doesn't hit them, where pressures and social pressures don't become a conflicting party in their ambitions, in their desires, what's in you is the purest version of who you are. It's when other people's expectations, societal norms and roles, environments, pain, trauma starts to hit your life. And now we're having children experience these things younger and younger. And with social media and the video games and all of these things, we don't really get to explore imagination like we did in the past. In the past, children had to play with sticks and marbles and uh, all of these things to really form an imagination. So our imagination is the act or the power of forming a mental image. Come on, follow me with this. A mental image of something not present to the senses or never before wholly perceived in reality. What does that sound like? It sounds like faith. Let me read that again. Imagination is the act or power of forming mental image of forming a mental image of something not present to the senses or never before wholly perceived in reality. That sounds like faith to me. <laughs> faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the movement upon a mental image that of something that is not present. It... um. It's not present to my senses. I don't see it. I can't touch it. I never experienced it before. I never um, um, walked it out before. But this is something that I am forming a mental image of myself being this thing. For example, a child can want to become a construction worker. They may have never did a ride with a construction worker, know the ins and outs of what it means to be a construction worker, but their imagination, their desire, and, it, and that idea draws them into that image of themselves, right? Now, imagination is exploration. So sometimes when you're finding your destiny, when you're finding the dream, when you're finding the thing that you were meant to do, you may take a series of steps in order to get there. You may not end up being the dancer, but you may do plays at your local community center. You may do plays at church. You may have different experiences on a different scale that lead up to a bigger picture, that lead up to the main stage. But remember, you have to have an environment that cultivates it, that encourages it, that speaks into the destiny so that you can have free reign to explore with faith movement. Your faith acts on what you imagine. Uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope for where? In my imagination, in my heart, the image that I see in my mind. So example, if I'm believing God for a car, I start to see that thing before I lay hold of it. I imagine myself driving a certain car. I imagine myself owning a certain house. I imagine myself healed. Faith is the substance of things hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Same with imagination. I imagine something in my mind that I can't see, I can't sense, I don't have a prior image of, but I'm seeing this thing in my imagination. 
Same thing with your dream. Same thing with your destiny. You see it, it's in your heart, but it's a frustration when you cannot take the faith movements with your imagination to get there. Maybe you have a dream, but that dream requires you to quit your nine to five. Come on. Maybe you have a dream and people around you are telling you, are you crazy? Don't quit that nine to five. Are you crazy? Why are you starting a business in the middle of a pandemic? Are you crazy? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? That imagination is stunted or pushed back because of the environment that you're in. Instead of having people around you like the owner of Spanx did to say, go do it. You're going to do big things. It's in you. You're going to change the world that encourages, edifies, and empowers what's in you. So in order to have that dream actualized, we got to have desire. We got to have imagination. And lastly, we got to have ambition. We have to be able to step out on what we imagine. We have to be able to step out on that idea that became a strong, unquenchable desire. And when you begin to step out on ambition, nothing will hinder you or stop you. And if you're a believer, that ambition is not your own. That ambition is fueled by God's direction, God's instructions, God's timing, and God's order. You're not doing, um, moving out of selfish ambition, but you are moving with the dictates of God, because if it is a destiny, if it's a dream that God placed within your heart it's going to take God to fully bring, to bring you fully into the fullness of it. For example, me, I had a dream to teach. I didn't know that the teaching that God meant for me was not in the secular arena. The teaching that God meant for me would be teaching in the body of Christ. And I asked him, what was his ordained plan for me? And the thing he said back to me is, you are called to the body of Christ. And through a series of time and through series of asking God questions and getting responses, I came to understand the dream that he placed in my heart was teaching, but it wasn't teaching in the secular arena. It was teaching within the body of Christ. So I took a series of steps in order to get there. God had to prepare me. He had to teach me how to get on YouTube, there was certain experiences that I needed to have. I needed to be awakened to the entrepreneurial grace so that I could now be a destiny coach and have my own coaching business and be able to bring people to their destiny as he has brought me to my destiny. So that destiny is going to take a series of steps. For example, your destiny is something that you've always done. You're just going to arrive to a bigger stage, more refined in image of what you always were. For example, if as a child, the, the scriptures say, train up a child in the way that it should go and train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he won't de depart from it. And when I think about that scripture, I think about the Old Testament. I think about the New Testament. I think about the examples that we have of children being born in scripture. And as children were born, they were born into who they were supposed to be. God would tell them what this child would do, what their destiny would be. And oftentimes that was based upon the family that they were born in. That was based upon what God spoke concerning the child. He would be this with Jesus, with Moses, with um, uh, John the Baptist, different individuals in the Bible, we see where their destiny was spoken even before they got into the world. Their name was given. We see where kings, their sons were already destined to reign on the throne. So they already knew what they were born in the earth for, right? So it's vital as parents, as 
when we have children that we begin to ask the Lord, what is this child supposed to do so that we can train that child in the way that they should go? So for example, our son, the Lord has affirmed him over and over again and told us who he's supposed to be in the earth. And so it is our job as parents to cultivate and train that child and bring him into the direction that God is speaking for him. For example, we knew music was on our son. We knew that he would be a musician. So at an early age, I think it was one years old, we bought him a play piano. By the time he was four, he started lessons and now he's playing um, the keyboard, the piano. So we are bringing him into the fullness of who God said he'd be. And throughout the years, I've seen the progression of his um, destiny, the progression of who he's supposed to be is manifesting as we cultivate and as we train him up in the way that he should go. And that's just one of the dimensions of what God said he should be in the earth. So it's the same way with us. Even sometimes when you find out who you're supposed to be at 40, some people don't come into the fullness of who they're supposed to be until later in life. Some people come into that awakening with that idea, that dream, that desire later in life. And then they have individuals that cultivate that environment. You have people that drop everything and move to a certain um, state, city, town, and they slum it. They sleep on somebody's couch because the desire is so strong within their heart that they will forsake everything to follow that dream. I'm reminded of even Tabitha Brown, who we all see is rising in influence. She had a dream. She had a desire. She had a destiny. And her husband knew that she had that dream. Not only that, it was prophetically decreed over her. She had the backing of heaven. She had confirmations as to who she would be in the earth and what she would do. They just didn't know how it would play out. They didn't know all of the components that would need to take place to get her there. They didn't know she would get sick and have to go to a vegan lifestyle and she would be directed from her innermost being from the spirit of God on the inside of her to do videos. They didn't know that these videos would lead to her having national success, right? But one of the things I want to point out is how her husband scaffolded the dream. He pushed the dream. He supported the dream. He believed in the dream. And now because he believed in that dream, he's a recipient of that dream. So when you are somebody that has a big dream within your heart, not everybody is awakened to who they are really destined to be. Not everybody gets that enlightenment. Not everybody gets that um, experience. But when you do, you're going to have desire. You're going to have that imagination. Okay, you're going to have desire, which is the form of thought or idea or experience that settles within your spirit. And if you are a regenerated being and you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit is going to breathe upon that idea. And it's going to be something that stays with you that you cannot let it go. You're going to say, a lot of people tell me that. You're going to say, you know, when I was a kid, I really wanted to be this. And you're when you don't fulfill that longing, when you are awakened to that idea, that experience, that a longing, and you have a little taste of who you are supposed to be, you feel unfulfilled in other things. You don't feel like you're living your best life. You don't feel like you are your best, the best version of who you are. You are unsatisfied. And here it is, frustrated to no end in an environment that you cannot maximize your full potential because imagination comes with creativity. Imagination comes with the ability to create. 
thinking or active mind. It is in your thinking. It is in your active mind that you're able to explore. For example, if you're a hairstylist, you may feel um, uh, unfulfilled in another environment where you can't work with your hands, where you cannot create, where you cannot let your mind run wild in your ideas and in your creativity. So when we have that dream, we are able to think creatively. I'll go back to the founder of Spanx. She was able to use her imagination and create a product that solved a problem that brought her to the fulfillment of her dreams. And when you have desire, when you have imagination, and when you have ambition, which ambition is desire to fulfill or achieve a particular end. All right. So ambition is a strong desire to achieve the end goal. Ambition pushes you to move to another state and drop everything. Ambition pushes you to do it afraid. Ambition pushes you to go to school, drop everything, drop out of school and travel the world if that's your dream. <laughs> Ambition pushes you to reject the status quo, reject the voices and launch out on your dream. Ambition gives you the courage to step out in faith. And that ambition, when we are believers, is fueled by heaven's backing. So we don't want to have selfish ambition where we're doing something outside of the will of God, but we want to move in God's design. We want to move in God's plan, <clears throat> in God's timing, in God's order and structure. For example, when you are God led, he'll lead you to do certain things. He'll lead you to take a course. You might not even know why you took that course. And later on, when you look down the line, you're like, wow, that's why I had that experience and took that class because I was going to need it for 20 years later to do what I'm doing now. So for example, when we have that dream and we're following it from childhood into adulthood, we see something like what we see with Beyonce. I saw a video of Beyonce when she was a little girl on a stage singing and performing. It's not what we see today, but she had the same charisma. She had the same stage presence. She wasn't afraid. She was doing her thing even as a little girl. Her voice wasn't as refined. Her, um, um, she wasn't as mature in her gifting or her talent, but it's something that she's always done because she had an environment that cultivated it. She had an environment that groomed it so that she can be who we see today. And if you knew her back then, you would have saw the progression of who she is meant to be. Like I said with me as a child, I carried papers and I uh, would gather my friends around and I would teach my friends. When I got older, I took on a mentor um, position. I would um, mentor girls younger than me. So it just is a progression over time of that dream. It's an idea, an experience, a desire that you cannot let go of. It just keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. And you need a, a an environment around you that will cultivate it, that will push it, that will support it, that will um, scaffold it, that will not hinder you, but elevate you. You need people around you that believe in the dream. We call those who don't dream killers. Those who tell you, you can't do it. Those who say, why would you do that? Why would you leave your job? Why would you launch out and do a business? Why would you go sell coats across the country? Why would you? They can't perceive what you perceive in your heart. They can't see the vision. They didn't have the image that you had in your heart and in your imagination. 
They don't see the eye through the eyes of faith like you see through the eyes of faith. And we call those dream killers, those that come along and try to harm you, try to hinder you, try to hurt you, to stop you from believing. We see that with Joseph, his brothers. They were dream killers. They were moved by jealousy because of his position in the family, because of the affection that his father had towards him, because of the dream, the desire, the image, the idea that was birthed in his heart through an experience, which then he believed in it and desired to be what he saw. And they became dream killers. But here is the thing. When God has a preordained destiny for you, when that thing is birthed in your heart and you don't let it go and you maintain integrity and you maintain character throughout your life and you keep that dream before you, God will cause you to come to the palace for such a time as this. You will fulfill that destiny or that dream that God placed within your heart. I pray you guys were blessed. I pray you were inspired. I want to encourage you to keep going after your destiny. I'm a destiny coach. <clears throat> I work with clients one-on-one -on -one, and I work with clients in group coaching. Um, just as I have been able to navigate and to fulfill my destiny and to or actually come to the doors of destiny. <laughs> and I am walking out the preordained plan that God has for me. I pray that you too find that thing, find that idea, that dream that God has placed within you for you to fulfill before time begins. We are uh, gearing up for our annual <clears throat> women's conference, April 28th through the 29th in Deerfield, Illinois. You can go to my website for books, products, um, tickets, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.